Good morning or good afternoon everyone, depending on where you're joining us from and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sam Moulton from the Business Review and I will be your host. It's our pleasure to have Yoko Gawa with us today who will be discussing distributed temperature sensing, safety, assets and operations. Today's guest speaker is Dwight Eldridge, DTSX Product Manager at Yoko Gawa Corporation of America. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar platform on 24. You'll notice that this is browser-based, so if you disconnect at any point, just click the link you receive via email to rejoin. In order to ask questions, you can send these in via the Q&A widget, which is at the bottom of your screen, or use the questions box at the top left-hand corner of the screen. Try and allocate around 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the session to address any of your questions or thoughts. If you click on the survey widget, there's a few questions in there for you to answer in order to provide feedback, or you can do you can do this uh, during or immediately after the webinar. If you click on the green resources widget, you'll find a couple of PDFs from our speaker to view or download in there. And if you require help at any point, you can click on the yellow help widget. You can also move and resize and maximize it. near the windows in front of you to get a better view of the webinar. But apart from that, now without further ado, allow me to welcome to Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Sam. This is uh, Dwight Eldridge, uh, Product Manager with uh, Yoko Gawa Corporation of America. Um, I'm going to just kind of get uh, get started with our, our presentation here, um, just as, uh, you know, an overview to our agenda. Uh, this, uh, the, our presentation is really intended as, a, as an introduction. I, I know uh, in, in our audience we've probably got folks that, have, uh, that are fairly experienced with, uh, with distributed temperature sensing or other distributed fiber optic uh, sensing platforms. Um, this, this presentation really is, is intended as, a, as, an, as an introduction and we're going to be talking just about uh, fiber optic distributed temperature sensing today. Um, uh, so, uh, kind of the, the, the four key areas that I'm going to that I'm going to cover at, in the next uh, uh, 35 or 40 minutes: um, a, a little bit of background on, on what uh, distributed temperature sensing is, the uh, you know the the, the technology background, um, an overview on the uh, of the product offerings from Yokogawa. Uh, uh, to uh, addressing uh, uh, fiber optic DTS. Um, I've got then six application cases, which I think are are, are quite typical um, application cases. Uh, you know, currently in use, some of them for you know for 15 or or, or 20 years. Um, I, I, and this will not be a you know an attempt to kind of go through a, a, a systems engineering analysis or overview as to you know how um, you know how how these systems are are deployed. These are all. Uh, engineered solutions, and uh, I, I just want to um, again provide a, some context and a basis for understanding as to um, what DTS is and, and 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 where it fits and what kinds of applications it fits well in. And then uh, we'll come back with uh, just kind of a, a review on, uh, on 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 our our product platform, some of the solutions and benefits, and then to uh, then to wrap up, we'll have a few minutes at the end for uh, for question and answer. So I'm just going to um, I'm going to I'm going to start in um, as I mentioned uh, with just a, a little bit of the background on the uh, development of the technology. Um, uh, one of the key uh, sources for some of the early uh, research and development with with respect to the use of optical fiber. For sensing applications and, uh, and, and and specialty optical fibers, um, in, in particular, is, uh, goes back to the early 80s. Um, um, and the University of Southampton was one of the key uh, uh, resource um, platforms for um, a lot of this, a lot of the early work. That was also about the same time frame that uh, optical fiber was beginning to be you know, de deployed for. Uh, uh, communications applications. That certainly was the, you know, the the, the high volume um, application that you know that drove the deployment of the of the technology. But uh, uh, the University of Southampton uh, was very instrumental in the in in the development of, of early specialty fibers and especially fiber uh, using fiber to sense uh, you know physical measurements. Um, 
the the technique that we're uh, that we've deployed with 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 our solutions, um, we're using a Raman technique. Uh, this was um, um, discovered, what you might guess, by a, a, a Dr. Raman, and uh, and and uh, what what he learned was that uh, when you pulse the laser down a fiber, part of the uh, part of the reflected signature that comes back to you um, uh, provides uh, some temperature information, so that. Uh, and in effect, the optical fiber becomes a uh, becomes an intrinsic sensor, and uh, you know we'll be touching on these points as I go through the presentation. But uh, um, uh, the, the benefit um, and, the, and the differentiator between distributed temperature sensing and you know discrete or point temperature sensing is you know is kind of obvious just in the in the description there. It is where um, uh, distributed temperature sensing gives you a continuous profile. Of temperature, whatever the optical fiber is in contact with, um, so the, there there are no there are no individual transducers or uh, thermocouples, RTGs, etc. Uh, the the glass fiber is the uh, is the intrinsic sensor. Um, so just a, a schematic of of kind of how the uh, you know how a, a, a typical DTS system is. Uh, is configured. Um, it's uh, as I mentioned, we're using an optical laser source, um, and uh, and and we're uh, and we're working in this case over standard telecommunications grade um, fiber. This is multi-mode um, fiber. As we uh, as we pulse uh, a laser into the fiber, um, we get a a backscatter um, or or a reflected. Signal um, that occurs because of natural anomalies in the structure of the of the optical glass as the as the pulse travels along the glass. That uh, that reflected signal comes back to the uh, to the interrogator to the to the launch port. It's it is it is split off and then analyzed and uh, and and uh, you can see in the in the oval circle there what Dr. Rahman discovered was that uh, there's um, a slightly shifted wavelength. Uh, from the incident wavelength, so we're launching at the uh, at, at the, the green center center line, and in our case, uh, there's about a 40 nanometer offset between the anti-Stokes uh, and, and Stokes uh, signals that we that we pick up and analyze uh, the anti-Stokes, giving us the, the temperature dependency. The Stokes signal we use uh, and and, uh, and and through analysis of time of flight, knowing the the speed of light in the glass, um, we're, we're able to measure the location from where that particular temperature information came from. So, um, essentially, just just a, a you know a little, a little display here of, of, of what's going on. Um, um, you know, our our interrogator, we're we're launching a we're launching a 10 nanosecond pulse into the fiber. That light pulse occupies about a, uh, a linear meter of, of, uh, of, of, of length along, along the fiber, and as it's, uh, as it, as it's, as it's, it's pulsed, the, the reflected signals that we get back effectively give us a temperature sample along each meter of the fiber that we're connected to. So, um, you know, I've just noted there. You know, our systems range uh, from uh, with, with a, a, a distance range from two to 50 kilometers. So that's uh, you know that's that's you know that's that's a, that's equivalent to uh, you know a um, you know a few thousand to several tens of thousands of samples per uh, um, per per channel from our system. So again, just to kind of the differentiators between single point discrete sensors and 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 distributed, um, it, the advantage is being that uh, with large scale systems, we've got a lot of a lot of area to cover cover, or you, or you need a lot of you know you need a lot of uh, um, dense temperature information for process monitoring, etc. Um, you know, we we simply have the the interrogator. And then a and, and then the the optical sensor is simply the the optical fiber cable that we deploy and attach to whatever it is that we're wanting to uh, to monitor. We can essentially blanket a structure with uh, with optical fiber, um, and 
uh, a couple of key advantages were uh, there's no current in that optical fiber, so uh, uh, we're we're uh, and and it's not uh, and it's not a conductor, so we're not susceptible to the EMI, and it, and it gives us uh, uh, some advantage where where electrical current or arc you know arcing could be a a safety concern. So um, just a, a summary here. I've mentioned several of these things. So we're uh, we're, we're using uh, we're, we're using a, a, a passive element, an optical fiber, as the uh, as the as the temperature sensor. Uh, there's no current um, flowing there. There is a there's a range depending on the application, and we'll touch on these in some of the example cases. Um, you know, a range of commercially available um, optical fiber constructions that are suitable for you know, for forming or or, or bending or, or contouring or or uh, providing the you know a, a, a robust uh, element that can be uh, you know that can be deployed out in an area uh, where it you know it may be run over by vehicles and and, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, a, a broad range of of, of, of cabling solutions for um, the particular application that we're that we're addressing. Um, Again, it's it's it is uh, it's, it, it it enables uh, a scale of coverage that's just uh, literally impractical with uh, with discrete sensors in most cases. Well, I'm going to give uh, just give you a little overview on uh, the Yokogawa current uh, product family for distributed sensing. Um, what, 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 we, what we're trying to uh, convey here is just to give you a sense in terms of uh, our two product classes, our, uh, our, um, our original product, the, the, the 200 series you see down in the lower left. Um, what we're showing is the, the, the system range. In other words, uh, uh, what length of fiber we can, uh, we can, we can measure uh, uh, on a single channel. And then on the on the y-axis there, a, um, a representation of the of the performance capability of of the system. And you can see the you know we have kind of a, a, a our 200 series machine, kind of a more of a of of, of a workhorse. Um, you know, cover a broad range of applications. You know, up to a six kilometer range per per channel, and uh, with temperature resolution and. Uh, you know, on the order of a, of a of a tenth of a degree C. Um, the 3000 uh, series uh, platforms uh, uh, offer a, a much broader range of solutions. Uh, they start at uh, at a range of 10 kilometers, and then we step from 10 to 16 to 30, and then 50 kilometers uh, in in total. Um, and 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 but with a much higher uh, temperature resolution capability. So, uh, uh, so we, we would, you know, we would look at uh, we would look at the 3000 series systems for, you know, process monitoring applications where very high temperature resolution was required, or where the scale of uh, what we're trying to cover, uh, pipelines, um, electric utility monitoring, etc., um, is uh, requires much longer uh, distance range. Um, just a little bit about the, the the engineering that went into the you know the development of our of our platforms. These are uh, Yokogawa's approach uh, from an engineering standpoint was some, somewhat unique in that uh, you know we started with uh, an industrial grade uh, uh, industrial class controller platform, our Stardom uh, platform. So these are all of our systems are in uh, 19 inch rack mount configurations. Uh, just kind of briefly left to right across the uh, across each of the platforms, uh, you know, a, a, a choice of power supplies be it DC if you're running off battery and solar panel, um, AC. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention the uh, the optional um, uh, RTU in the in the next couple of slides. The next uh, the next module is a, a five slot domain uh, DTS uh, interrogator uh, unit. You see that's um, there's essentially a single a single output from from that unit. And so what we so to make the system scalable, we uh, we've added an optical switch module, which will uh, 
which in which we offer an option of two, four, or or sixteen channels. So we can we can configure a, a simplex system with just a power supply and a DTS module, or we can multiplex the system up to sixteen up to sixteen channels. And you can see how that would uh, you know, how that would scale your capability in terms of um, of, of coverage. Um, the Stardom platform is is a little unique, and our and our and our solution, uh, our engineered solution here is is a little unique in that uh, we offer um, a uh, an integrated um, PLC option with with um, both the 200 series and the 3000 series uh, systems. It's a it's a programmable logic controller. Um, the the key advantage of this um, option is that. Um, it, it enables uh, it, it enables us to engineer a solution where we want to tie in other uh, other inputs and 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 provide other outputs. So there's analog I/O um, on this um, that that enables us to uh, uh, provide uh, 12 analog inputs, two analog outputs, uh, 16 digital uh, and, and and eight digital outs. Um, uh, the, the key factor here is, and, and what's I think unique to uh, Yokogawa's uh, solution is that it is uh, it's a shared time base with the DTS, so that uh, you know very often where you, uh, particularly from process monitoring and oil field applications, uh, you know you'd have a, a, a number of other um, uh, 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 monitoring points that you might want to. Uh, tie in and synchronize with uh, your temperature profiling. Um, this is a you know this is an all-in-one solution um, uh, to achieve that, and uh, it also provides our interface for uh, for SCADA or uh, remote windows um, interfacing. Uh, um, both this uh, FCN and the and the and the processor that's a part of the of the DTS. Uh, the DTS itself. Um, uh, um, both of these are the, the, the system was was engineered as a uh, from an IT standpoint as a as a network element. So uh, from a from an IT security, um, we you know we 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 built in the, uh, the the capability that it be fully integrated in an enterprise uh, network and, uh, and and not have to be you know re remotely um, isolated from uh, from the rest of your enterprise system. Um, to give you a little uh, diagrammatic here comparison in terms of performance capabilities of of, of the two platforms, um, what you're seeing is a, a, a temperature profile of a, a six kilometer fiber with a, a 10 second averaging time, and uh, just to display the the performance capability differences between between the two systems, um, the the uh, the 200 series on top with a you know, plus or minus a, a degree C with a 10 second update over that six kilometers. Um, you know when you get out towards the 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 end of the range of the of the system, you're more you're upwards of uh, you know, 10 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees C versus the 3000 uh, series. Platforms, you can see it's a different, it's a different class of product. It's a, it's a, an entirely, uh, you know, next generation in terms of uh, signal processing uh, capability. Um, what I should mention here is that uh, while you're while you're, you're you're looking at maybe at the 200 series, and you're saying, wow, that the the signal gets very noisy out towards the the end of that that six kilometer range. In fact, yes, yes, it does in a single ended configuration. Most typically, what what we do when we deploy systems is we use the switch, and then and then we do what's called a loopback measurement. So we we measure from two directions. We then overlay the results from the uh, from the two profiles, and we use the best half of uh, of each profile. So we're always able to, to operate in the you know in in the optimum temperature resolution portion of the of of the system. Um, there is uh, I won't go through the the detailed specifications on on the units. Um, we are going to offer um, this presentation will be available uh, 
to you if you if you um, if you if you'd like a copy of it um, uh, once once we're done here today. Um, uh, so I'm just going to keep going here, and um, and we'll touch on a number on a number of these things. But uh, uh, the, you, you may the acronym DTSX um, is a trademark. Uh, um, uh, uh, name f uh, from Yokogawa. Um, the X was, uh, you know, part of the kind of the, the engineering approach to to the to our DTS uh, solutions that we're offering. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that these are these are hardened solutions in terms of um, IT network elements. Um, uh, the other, the other uh, area where we, I think, uh, really uh, have led a lot of the, the competition in terms of uh, uh, equipment capability is this. This equipment was not designed to be in, a, in an air-conditioned, uh, you know, conditioned space. It was designed to, to go in a cabinet on a pedestal, uh, run off battery, um, you know, with solar backup uh, and, and maybe radio link communication out in the field. Um, and I'll just mention, uh, uh, you know, a minus a design for a minus 40 to plus 65 operating environment, um, and that includes the optical that includes the optical switches, the optical multiplexers. But uh, in this graph in the upper right, uh, essentially you'd see a, a red line that's fairly horizontal in the middle. That's the uh, that's the temperature, uh, the ambient temperature, 22 and a half degrees C that the that the uh, that the DTS is measuring. Um, and then what you're seeing is the the DTS it, itself, the, the 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 interrogator in a temperature changer chamber, ramped from up up over to from 70 degrees C down to minus 45 degrees C and 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 back. And you can see the uh, the stability of the of the electronics there. Um, another kind of X factor um, uh, benefit of the Yokogawa. Uh, Solution here is um, our power consumption. Um, the the 200 and, and 3,000 are uh, in standby mode. Uh, in other words, ready to measure, but not actually measuring, uh, but online. Um, you know, they're drawing a watt or two. Um, the 200 during measurement draws about 10 watts. The 3,000, um, 16 watts. So you can see it's you know most suitable for um, for outdoor, off the grid solar panel operation. Um, as as part of uh, you know as Yokogawa's heritage as a as a as a, a, a systems control and 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 uh, and an automation um, um, manufacturer the, you know we, we we went to the Stardom platform because of the the ease of integration with uh, other control and, and and safety systems other applications uh, of uh, the Stardom platform. As, as well as uh, ease of integration with our um, uh, our fast tool supervisory um, software uh, control and, and integration system. So uh, uh, the, the, the unique benefit here is that uh, you know uh, an engineered solution from a you know a, a world class industrial control and automation company that's uh, you know that's designed uh, for ruggedized operation. Standalone and but also easily and, and directly integratable with uh, with uh, industrial class um, processors and controllers. So I'm going to start now on uh, the first. I've got six cases here, so I'll I'll step through these kind of uh, as efficiently as I can here. Um, um, the first case that we're going to just uh, look at is. Uh, um, again, an application that was, uh, you know, one of the one of the first early applications of of DTS, and that was monitoring of uh, conveyor systems uh, um, and, and material handling systems uh, in, in mining applications and in, in industrial, you know, material handling applications. Um, uh, just because of the, you know, the the, the size of the, of the of the structure and the, you know the potentials for for um, for for uh, for fire hazard uh, either from the conveyor system itself or from uh, perhaps even sometimes from the material being handled in the conveyor um, a DTS um, is a is a is a natural uh, solution to 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 the, to the monitoring 
um, requirements here. Uh, um, uh, in other words, we we essentially um, it, it gives us the ability to simply uh, run optical fiber along the length of the structure, actually in in several locations, so that we can you know that we can pick up temperature from the from the material in in the conveyor, but most typically, what we're looking for is, uh, you know, heat generation from mechanical operation of the of the conveyor system. Um, um, and in terms of uh, the, the fiber deployment, there's a, a schematic down here in the lower lower right that uh, you know suggests a, you know a kind of a, a typical cable positioning. But um, as you can see, it, it gives us a, in, ter in terms of uh, uh, profiling and monitoring and gives us uh, an envelope of continuous temperature information um, around the material handling system. So, from a you know from a risk management uh, standpoint, uh, you know a very a very suitable application for uh, for DTS. Um, uh, another um, another. Uh, you know, early adopter of distributed temperature sensing uh, is um, uh, the oil and gas industry and other and other industries. Um, you know, that that are that are monitoring uh, downhole applications um, in the oil and in the oil and gas industry. Historically, they had used uh, um, wireline systems or uh, essentially uh, thermocouples (RTDs) on a uh, you know on a, uh, on, a on an electrical um, cable that was uh, Occasionally lowered into a a well to provide a um, you know a periodic temperature profile of of the well. Um, uh, what's what's pictured on this slide is just a, a schematic of a maybe a kind of a typical oil field uh, um, application in the upper in the upper left. You know where you, you've got uh, three wells um, pictured there. Um, uh, it's, it's very typical to use steam to uh, uh, to, to help soften the material in the in, in the reservoir so that it uh, will uh, so that it will flow towards the uh, towards the production well. And then in the middle is pictured uh, observation wells. They can be on on you, you typically in a perimeter around the production well, and sometimes um, inside and outside uh, the steam injection well. Um, used to monitor the the size, the location, um, the density, and the temperature of the uh, of the steam flood that's uh, that's surrounding the reservoir. Um, on the right 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 hand side, there, um, you know, uh, you know, this perhaps could uh, ref reflect what might typically be seen in in, uh, in, 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 in in hydraulic fracking applications, where you know where the uh, um, the steam in, in, in conjunction with uh, um, 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 pressurized hydraulic fracturing um, and enables some opening of, of, of seams in the geologic structure so that um, um, uh, oil from the reservoir will, will flow into the production well. Um, um, again, it was, a, it, was a, it was a natural application for, um, for, for fiber optics because it, um, it, uh, it, it provided a, a, a much superior solution to the uh, to the to the wire line, the downhole um, uh, um, process that had been used um, prior to this, and, and I, I think probably fiber optics uh, goes back uh, about 20 years now in uh, in low field applications. Um, so a much more a much more stable um, solution, a much more Repeatable solution, and, and, uh, and uh, surprisingly, um, uh, for as large as some of these, you know, geologic um, and, and oil field uh, production settings are, you know, the um, temperature resolution is a is is, is is really quite important to understand what's 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 really happening um, in the in the geology, um, um, and because of the because the fiber uh, stays embedded in the in the in the well casing. Um, uh, the, the, the repeatability of these measurements is is much better. Um, in, in in recent years, uh, distributed temperature sensing has been uh, combined with uh, some some newer uh, distributed sensing applications, uh, distributed acoustic, 
and distributed vibration sensing, um, a couple of examples where uh, um, also over optical fiber in, in similar environments. Um, and, and this would apply to other applications as well as, as oil and gas. I think we're going to see the combination of, uh, of DTS combined with uh, DAS or uh, DDS um, uh, um, because the, the, the combination of, of measurements is, uh, you know, the, the, the one plus one is a much, much greater than two kind of uh, Im improvement in terms of your understanding of um, the asset uh, that you're monitoring at or the process that you're trying to, that you're trying to manage. Um, a third early adopter in, uh, in uh, distributed fiber optic uh, temperature was the electric utility industry. Um, in, in, in that case, um, some of the early applications were um, uh, underground uh, power lines where, um, you know, when, when uh, some of these were, you know, fairly, fairly aged, um, but, uh, uh, but typically very conservatively engineered in terms of uh, temperature dissipation from the, from the conductors um, and, uh, and, 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 and then the, the use of, of, of adding or, or, or employing optical fiber that distributed along the length of these of these cables uh, provides a, a real time capacity rating so that uh, utilities were able to make uh, and are able to make in, uh, you know very 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 quick decisions um, uh, about you know grid utilization and uh, and and uh, where the where the where the term smart grid comes from, um, they're also able to uh, to uh, to monitor for the detection of um, you know abnormalities such as hot spots that might um, might be originating from a, a ground fault uh, or an insulation breakdown. Um, it's a again a very a very powerful tool in in terms of uh, network management of uh, uh, electric utilities. Just a couple other uh, uh, pictures here of, of you know typical monitoring techniques. Uh, fiber can be uh, you know uh, um, laid in a, in a in a cable tray to you know to kind of give a just a, a, a general uh, temperature feedback of of the uh, um, you know the, the temperature of the trays with with the power running through the cables. It can be uh, Strapped directly uh, to the cable, sometimes installed under uh, directly under the outer outer sheath of the cable before it's manufactured and installed. So it's a, a, te a technology that can be either retrofitted or you know or part of new construction. Uh, this slide is just to give you a, a, a sense of um, you know well what, what might be seen in the network operations center um, of a utility where um, where they're where they, you know, they have significant portions of their electric uh, utility grid, um, and, and which is, uh, you know, this is quite common in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in North America, Europe, uh, Japan, and and and, and other areas. Um, um, it, it's it is um, it's it's been a very a very powerful tool for the electric utility industry, and a, and a, and, a, and, a, and a very good fit in terms of uh, uh, you know be, being able to um, um, watch for, you know, the need for preventive maintenance before it becomes, you know, corrective maintenance after a fault or a, or a failure. Um, fourth case I want to I want to uh, touch on here is pipeline leak detection. Um, you know, it, um, with a you know with a, a 50 kilometer range. That's you know that's a 60 60 mile span um, if, uh, if uh, on a single ended um, monitoring configuration for for pipeline you know our uh, our 3000 series system is uh, you know very suitable uh, for this for this kind of application um, and and quite typically um, uh, you know if these are if these are energy that can be a, these pipelines are carrying in hydrocarbons or you know other materials um, we, we would uh, we would we would place an optical fiber 
some, somewhere on the structure, maybe uh, directly above, directly below, but also in the surrounding terrain, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to pick up, uh, um, to quickly pick up um, abnormalities in, in the temperature profile of the, of the, of the structure that, that might indicate that there's a, that there's a leak. Um, another application over on the right-hand side, uh, steam pipelines such as in, you know, many, many older cities um, around the world, uh, um, in North America, you know, especially New York, uh, um, there's a lot of the underground utilities. There's a, a, a lot of steam pipeline network uh, in place that's um, you know that's that's, that's aging. Um, very typically or historically, um, uh, problems or leaks in, in in the steam lines would be detected by another utility, perhaps a you know a communications utility that that had uh, that had cabling. In, in the same, in a you know, in an adjacent location to a steam line, and and, uh, and it wasn't until after a leak was pretty bad, and to the point that it had damaged you know other other utilities that uh, they would they would take notice that there was a that there was a problem. Again, um, DTS can be can be uh, retrofitted in in, uh, in in a lot of cases, um, and, and of course installed it where 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 uh, new steam piping is is being installed. And uh, you know, again, uh, you know, watching the background signature of, of temperature and, and, and knowing what uh, you know, no, knowing what the normal dynamic is versus uh, any abnormalities, uh, again, enables uh, enables operations and maintenance uh, um, teams to to make things preventive maintenance rather than corrective maintenance uh, or uh, or outage um, response. Um, one of the one of the uh, one of the one of the projects that we one of the early projects that we did with a, with the DTS 200 was a uh, monitoring of an ammonia pipeline um, application uh, was uh, a pipeline that that uh, was routing to a, a terminal facility and and so, some portion or section of that pipeline was uh, adjacent to a um, residential area. Um, uh, and so uh, um, we very successfully, you know, deployed uh, DTS there to uh, pick up. In that case, um, you know, a, a leak with, uh, on the ammonia pipeline was a, created a cold spot, a cold zone. So uh, very, um, a, a very quick and direct and uh, and and uh, you know, um, elegant way to, um, to you know to monitor continuously monitor the entire pipeline. Um, another another typical application is, is uh, around terminal facilities and you know and, and, and storage facilities. The, uh, the 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 piping to and from those facilities and very often um, you know in the upper left there are the four uh, tanks in the in the, in the schematics a, a tank farm. Um, very often fiber will be be routed um, just radially radially around the base of the tank structure, the storage structure, um, inside the retaining walls to, uh, again, uh, uh, you, you, you establish a, you know, a, a background temperature profile over time, you know, that's going to change with night and day and sunlight and, 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 uh, and, and, and weather, but you're, but, uh, but then you're very, it's very easy to pick up the abnormalities, um, with, uh, you know, if, if, if a leak begins, uh, to catch it very quickly before it becomes um, before it becomes very serious. In subsea applications, um, on, another one that uh, that DTS has been uh, deployed uh, for um, um, to subsea offshore um, uh, drilling operations up to a uh, you know to a drilling platform. The uh, essentially the the pipe, piping systems there are uh, these very large, very expensive umbilicals that are uh, that are that are heated so that the uh, you know the oil that's being that's being pumped from the production well is uh, uh, it is able to flow and doesn't uh, doesn't cause buildup or, or waxing if it if it was to cool down. So uh, again, DTS was a was a another natural solution um, uh, for. Uh, heating system integrity, and uh, which you know, which uh, which addresses flow assurance, um, 
and and it also is a it's a very very quick way to catch continuously along the length of your of your umbilical uh, the possibility of any kind of a of a breach. So again, um, uh, in, 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 in pipeline and in storage applications, um, we you know we've got the continuous uh, sensor deployment, um, the Joule Thompson effects, the the the, the delta T that happens when uh, when uh, um, you know a liquid or 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 gas or you know a multi-phase uh, uh, um, leak uh, begins is 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 quickly and, and 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 easily and directly monitored. The locations identified uh, immediately. And uh, uh, I, I think another important point, uh, particularly on, on pipeline applications, and we're seeing um, in in, uh, in in countries like Canada, for example, um, uh, a, a in, in increased regard for safety with respect to especially to energy pipelines and. You know, and, and, and new regulations uh, um, in, in that regard. Uh, DTS is a is a nicely complements um, uh, the, the you know some of the uh, flow and, and, and pressure and modeling techniques that have been that have been used in the past. It provides a you know a, a significant additional layer of, um, of um, assurance and and uh, and detection capability. Um, for risk management with the uh, with pipelines, and and it is and it is something that uh, that you know that can be be retrofitted um, while the existing monitoring systems are you know are are still in place. Uh, this case here that I want to take a look at is uh, skin temperature monitoring, and and this comes in a, a you know a, a range of a range of, uh, of, of shapes and sizes of, of structures to be monitored, but in the, you know in the case of uh, you know a furnace or and, and or um, high temperature reactor vessels, um, uh, there is those those vessels are essentially a kiln or an oven. Obviously, inside there's a an insulation material that's that's used to to uh, you know to keep the heat. Um, Inside the vessel, where the where the reaction, the controlled reaction is is, is taking place, um, but those insulating materials do break down and age as a result of temperature cycling and and, and heat. And so the the uh, uh, it, typically in these applications, uh, those those vessels or furnaces have to be shut down periodically to uh, you know just to to in, to inspect uh, the. The, the insulating materials, um, you know, based on experience of, of lifetime, uh, using the distributed temperature sensor uh, capabilities enables enables uh, you know very complete coverage of, of uh, the outside skin of of, uh, of a vessel or or a furnace and <clears throat> um, ena enables operators and and and, and, and maintenance uh, engineers to be able to see. You know the the buildup of heat and 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 essentially keep equipment in operation for longer periods of time and uh, and, and 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 cycle equipment out of you know out of operation for preventive maintenance work um, when it when it's needed rather than just on a uh, you know just on a, on a on a routine timing schedule. So uh, some examples of you know of attachment schemes. Uh, Again, um, where the, the DTS, the, the, the fiber is a, you know, we can create essentially a blanket um, around the structure, you know, radially. Uh, on, you know, if you need a very, a very tight profile temperature profile on a distillation tower, for example, um, or sometimes the fiber is serpentine. There's a number of a number of patterns that are that are used to provide the coverage, um, and, the, and the point is that uh, uh, because because it's a it's a, it's a linear element, uh, we have much greater coverage. You wouldn't necessarily have to know where the you know you know pick specific locations for discrete sensors and where that might be impractical. Um, DPS is a, is a is a very a very good uh, engineering solution. 
the last application I want to mention is uh, uh, an area that we have that we have done some work in, um, and uh, and that is taking advantage of you know of geothermal um, heat sources um, you know within the within the Earth, um, typically um, in, in various locations around the world, uh, and and there is as well have been some. Uh, some, uh, some projects done um, here in in North America. Um, the, the 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 heat source basically is used to uh, as a as a, a steam generation uh, source. Uh, water is is pumped or injected into the uh, into the geothermal well into the um, the high temperature um, geologic formation to form steam that uh, that's that's typically used to drive uh, perhaps a uh, a generating facility. Here's just a little, um, uh, just another, another schematic to show uh, the uh, near a, a typical arrangement, possibly where you're actually using uh, maybe treated wastewater from a municipality um, in, in, a, in an injection well into the the geothermal reservoir. Uh, then your 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 steam production well is. Is monitored and, uh, and and DTS is able to to give you basically a, a, you know a, a continuous um, you know cyclic monitoring of of the of the entire process. So your your um, your, your operations people are able to see the amount of recovery, the amount of uh, uh, of, of, of water usage, and uh, and the conversion efficiency within your within your reservoir. Um, um, it's uh, you know, as I just mentioned, it's a it's a multi a multi phase solution. It, 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 it's uh, in geothermal applications, it it can cover the uh, the entire process, um, um, and, and we can tie you know multiple links together through uh, through an optical an optical through the optical switch uh, uh, module on the DTS. Um, it, the, one of the challenges though in uh, geothermal applications. And in all high temperature applications, is that uh, is the you know is a kind of the, the state of the art in terms of uh, uh, fiber coating um, technologies. Um, currently, um, the, the, the optical glass outside of the you know or inside I should say of the of the cabling structure, whether that be stainless steel tube or some type some kind of you know actual cabled structure for protection. Um, the, but the glass itself also has to be um, also has to be hermetically coated uh, to um, to, uh, to stop hydrogen uh, egression, uh, ingression and uh, and so current limits on that are these days somewhere between three and four hundred degrees C. Um, uh, typically, we can go up up to uh, you know well up into the two fifty uh, degree C range with polyimide coatings. Once you start pushing. 300 to 350 C. Um, uh, we often uh, we often get involved with with metallic coatings, and uh, those right now, uh, I think the upper limits are up, up around 400 C. But it's a you know it's an area it's a, it's an area on the sensor element that's 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 evolving, and um, you know and, and and there continues to be innovation and and, and progress there. So uh, that's kind of the current. State of the art for uh, for high for very high temperatures such as geothermal, but this this could also apply to you know to other processing applications that or process monitoring applications that you might have in mind. So I'm just going to turn it back to Sam for a second here. I think we've um, we have a, a poll we'd like you to, to uh, we'd like some feedback I guess in terms of uh, uh, some of the information that we've shared so far. Thank you very much. So yeah, this is the only poll we'll be running in today's session. It's a multiple choice, multiple answer poll, so you can select uh, as many of the answers as you want. Once you've ticked uh, the boxes, just click submit. I'll, uh, I'll read out the question and the answers for you now. So uh, in the webinar, they've explained six DTS application cases where you can use uh, DTS. And the question is, do you see opportunities to use DTS and are there other applica applications where you can use where we can use DTS? And the possible answers are one, the fire hazard monitoring along a conveyor system, two, 
downhole well temperature monitoring, three, electric power transmission line monitoring, four, pipeline leak detection, five, skin temperature monitoring of vessels and furnaces, uh, or six, geologic temperature. Uh, so if you could just comment on this, Dwight, in order to give the attendees a little bit longer voting. Okay. All right. Um, yes, as I now I'm going through these, um, uh, you know, each one is a, you know, is a, is, uh, is our, each of these are our engineered solutions, and there's a, there's a, you know, a, a range of variances in, in, in all of them, but they're, um, they're, they're quite well, quite well understood applications. There are systems integrators that are uh, very familiar, and uh, uh, yeah, we'd be, we'd be interested in your. In your in your feedback on uh, on this, uh, well, um, okay. so that's uh, I'm sorry, Sam. That's all right. So yeah, the results are up now. If you just want to uh, talk through these before uh, finishing your presentation. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. It was kind of kind of typical. The you know downhole and, and and pipeline being a couple leadings, but uh, obviously a lot of uh, a lot of interest in. In the other areas as well as we might as we might expect. Um, so I just I want to wrap up with uh, um, just a, a little a little summary uh, of some of some of the material that we've covered. Um, you know, distributed sensing versus versus uh, discrete. We're covering uh, you know large scale thousands of uh, of sensor points. Um, um, uh, applications where you might not know where to put discrete sensors, or there's just too there's, there's too many, too much area to cover. Um, uh, environments where um, there's a lot of electromagnetic noise, um, uh, you know, op optical fiber being non-conductive. Um, you know, we don't we don't have uh, EMI or the, or the potential for uh, electrical arcing uh, from a safety consideration. Um, but, you know, the, the, some of the, the the engineering advantages in in the in the Yokogawa solutions. Uh, you know, wide operating range, um, um, and, and as you saw from a, on, the, on the performance slide, very uh, very high performance um, solutions. Um, uh, I think probably on the, uh, the the IT and the networking side, the, the capability to integrate other other uh, in inputs and outputs, and the you know and the security that's been engineered into these solutions. Uh, as industrial grade uh, automation and control solutions is uh, is, is is very key. Um, uh, again, I think um, you know we've 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 covered uh, we, we've we've covered a, a number of this, but uh, uh, um, we we can we can scale the product basically to to your application, be it a simple uh, or a more simple. Uh, standalone um, plant monitoring asset management type solution to you know to a, a much more complex integrated um, um, network solution that's that's you know that's a, that's a part of your your enterprise network. Um, so uh, three summary points. Um, I, I think the, the takeaways from from uh, I, the hope that you got from today is that uh, you know uh, a, a very powerful tool for enhancing. Uh, Asset management and, and operations, um, supporting uh, risk management and uh, especially predictive maintenance, and being a, uh, a fairly low cost of, of ownership of, of, of solution. Um, so um, we'd like to uh, open things up to uh, some questions. If uh, if there are, we we won't uh, try to handle kind of. Real, real detailed stuff. We can get back to you uh, individually on that. But if there are some some general questions, we'd be uh, be more than happy to to handle. Okay. Thank you very much. So yeah, we've already had plenty in. But if you do want to send any more in, uh, there's the white box at the top left hand corner of your screen. Just type the questions in there and click submit. Uh, I'm going to pick some stuff we've got already at the moment. And the first one is: Does this uh, DTS technology uh, can this DTS technology measure the temperature of the steam? Uh, I guess that would um, that would that would depend on uh, you know, you know we'd, 
we, we depend on the structure in which you know where, where you are trying to you know to measure the steam. Um, and I, I don't know about temperature limitations in terms of the actual or the anticipated actual steam temperature, um, but um, I, I guess it would it would it would be more a question of you know where to locate the the, uh, the the sensor element, the cable within within the structure, be it a pipeline or uh, I'm not sure of the exact application, but um, it would certainly be something that we could that we could look at. Um, typically, it is uh, you know typically it's, it's placed outside a steam line to um, you know as, as a leak detection preventive uh, uh, preventive maintenance tool. Thank you very much. Next one I'm going to ask is, can the data slash measurement results be exported for further processing, e.g. MATLAB? What formats are provided, and is there any data viewer software available? Uh, so sure. I mean, in, in, in most applications, um, data analysis, you know, the, the interrogator, uh, the temperature profile is just the start of the process. Um, and uh, you know you can uh, we can export data over uh, you know over uh, in, in, mod, in Modbus format um, or in direct file um, you know direct file output um, over ether, over Ethernet for example um, um, and, and 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 that's typical from from most applications is that uh, while we have a simple user interface software that uh, you know that that uh, that that, that hooks directly to the DTS and can provide you know simple alarming information and so on and so forth. Most most typically, uh, data is outputted and and and, and plugged into modeling um, applications for you know for further analysis. Thank you. Next one, I've got uh, two parts. What is the effect of connectors in the fiber measurement? And is there a maximum number of connectors? Um, so the the effect is um, um, connectors, you know, introduce two things. They introduce loss and reflectance. Um, um, in in some cases, uh, you know, in some cases there are absolute necessities, uh, such as subsea applications, and and part of the engineering that went into the 3,000 and, and, and some of the very impressive performance you see in terms of uh, signal processing and temperature resolution and so on are, are the result of the fact that uh, at, 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 the sea, at the sea bottom there are optical connectors that uh, you know that, that, that connect into the production production well and, and, and part of the engineering that went into the 3,000 series system was uh, you know to be able to address those effects. I would say, in, in, in practical cases, to the extent possible, uh, you would want to stay away from connectors uh, because they because they do induce a, you know a reflectance and that creates a somewhat of, a, of an optical dead zone. And in terms of the number of connectors that you can include, it would depend on which system we're working with, you know, what kind of range you're trying to cover. Um, you know, we'd really have to kind of look at uh, you know the particular application with you to give you a, a definitive answer. Hey, thank you. And I think we've got time for one more question, which is what approvals do you currently have? I'm sorry, which approvals? Just what approvals? Oh, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the whole question. OK, all right. Um, you know, we, we, I, we certainly can. Um, I guess I wouldn't try to answer all of that off the top of my head. Um, the, um, the, the, all, all the hardware has gone through, you know, ex extensive testing and, and, and qualification. Um, we can we can certainly provide uh, general and detailed specifications on on, on all of the um, whether this be for you know uh, the kind of environment where the equipment is going to be. Uh, is, is going to be de deployed. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what what the intent of the question is, but um, but certainly we've gone through extensive and exhaustive qualification, and uh, we are glad to share that information. We're, we're proud of the performance of the of the of the solutions that we've engineered. Okay, thank you very much. So that uh, brings us to the end of the Q and A session.
and the end of the webinar. It just leads me to thank Dwight for it was a great presentation and thank Yoko Gawa for sponsoring this session. To all the attendees, you'll receive an email shortly telling you how you can access the on-demand version of the webinar, or you can access this through our website, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. Um, so a few people have asked about getting a copy of the slides, and Dwight, uh, Dwight mentioned it as well. So a PDF will be available in the green resource list widget. So if you click on that in the on-demand version, you'll be able to download it or view it there. This will be out in a, a couple of hours, like I said. Uh, once the webinar ends now, a survey will appear in its place. It's been active throughout, but it will now appear, and if, if you took the time to answer the questions in there and provide some feedback, we'd appreciate that. We look forward to sharing further webinars with you, so please keep an eye out on the website I mentioned earlier. Follow us on Twitter, which is at BRWebinars for daily updates, and join our LinkedIn group, Business Review Webinars. Apart from that, thank you once again. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much.